Hi, welcome everyone. We're so happy to have you for our live demo series. And I'm Maria Coriel Martin, the founder of Art Toolkit. And today I'm just so excited to welcome one of our friends and favorite artists and Art Toolkit ambassadors, Lisa Spangler, artist from Austin, Texas. And Lisa, I think of you as an artist and really marvelous, like card maker, like you have an eye for design and uh, whimsy and also color mixing, like an incredible, um, you take deep dives into color and then you just do marvelous explorations of um, the desert throughout your region. And being here in the Pacific Northwest, it's always thrilling for me to see your desert. So Lisa, I just really want to say thank you and, and welcome back to Art Toolkit. Um, I love, love your work and everything you do. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much, Maria. And it's so funny because the first time I got my art toolkit palette, which I still have and love, was going on a road trip to visit all the major deserts in the Southwest. Um, so it's, it's, I, I just love it. So, yeah. Well, thanks for coming on today to explore making some cards for Valentine's Day, um, ranging from some flowers and hearts. And I can see with your palette, you've been just taking a deep dive into some various reds. So um, I've got some of my palettes here today. I'm gonna be um, painting along and um, we've got the chat from YouTube. So if anyone has any questions, go ahead and just drop them in the chat and I'll try my best to make sure they're answered. And um, Lisa, we'll pop up your desk and, and really excited to, to do some painting with you. Okay, great. All right, so I'll clear this part off. Um, these are some of the things that we're going to be making. Um, and here's my little palette. This, this palette, I loaded all of my red colors that I happen to have. I just like threw them all in here. Um, but the first thing I wanted to do was tell you all, as you probably know, that um, red is actually a mixture of magenta and yellow. So I thought I'd just do that really quick because this, it blew my mind the first time I ever learned, learned about this. Um, yeah, you always think of red as a primary color that you shouldn't be mixing it. Right, that's what, <laughs> that's what we learned all, all the time in school, right? So here is magenta. Let me move this over a little bit so you can see. So there's magenta. And then here is Hansa yellow light. So there's that. And it, it's just like total magic here. So let me put some Hansa yellow light down here and get some quinacridone rose or magenta. And you can see it's already, oops, it, this isn't on here. So this is already changing to red. I mean, look at how easy that is. Yeah, that shift from that cool magenta to red happens so quickly. I know, right? It's like, it's amazing. It's just like the first time I, I saw this, I was like, what? <laughs> I, could, I couldn't believe it. Um, so that brings me to this little palette. So when I first started watercoloring, I went on this quest for the perfect red. And I must have bought like, I don't know how many reds there are, like how many are in here. <laughs> There's a couple more in the drawer too, I think. Um, but what I didn't know was that um, the, the names that are used for colors um, and uh, the pigment names can be completely different, um, but they're, uh, they're the same. So here's Daniel Smith, Quidacridone Coral. And this is Da Vinci, they call it quinacridone red. And I bought both of these not knowing that they're both the same pigment. So if you look in the really fine print on the side, you'll see that this is PR209, which stands for pigment red 209. And these are both, um, you know, pretty much, they're really super close. I mean, if you look very carefully, then you you'll you might be able to tell but here they are i swatched both of these out and i'll i'll do a scan of these so that you know if anybody out there really wants to see they can see oh you know quinn coral from daniel smith and da vinci quinn red you know look how close they are oh, so that's a good tip to make sure and see what what's the origin of the pigment that is giving the color yeah yeah and it's mm -hmm. the same here with this pr254 
Um, look at how close these are. So this one's Daniel Smith and this one is Windsor and Newton. Um, and once again, they're so close. So if you're on a quest for reds, my advice is to, you know, check out the pigment number and don't get two that are the same. Like, you know, they might have different handling characteristics, um, but uh, as far as what the manufacturers add to the pigment to make the paint. Um, so you can go with like your favorite manufacturer, but check the pigment numbers, just, just FYI. <laughs> Oh, great <laughs> so I had to tell you, <laughs> I, I had to tell everybody that. And then, so here are the colors that are in my palette and these are all listed. Everybody always asks what the colors are that are in the palette. So these are all listed over on Instagram and I, we could probably add them to the YouTube description too. I'm not sure. I think I've I think got so. them in there. I'll, I'll double check. Yeah, but um, I'm going to be working with mostly this palette and then my um, folio palette when we go to do the flowers later. Um, but I wanted to show you, I just wanted to play with these first. And um, then, so let me get this out of the way. So I thought we'd start off by doing some simple hearts, just like these. And you can use, um, if you have it, you can use a, um, a postcard pack, like this is from Strathmore. Um, so you could use something like this, or you can just totally roll your own. So just cut some paper to four by six. And I looked this up yesterday because I was curious. Um, it doesn't even have to be four by six. Four by six is the size, at least for here in the US, um, if you want to use a postcard stamp, um, it needs to be four by six. Otherwise, you can just put a, a regular um, forever stamp on it and, and mail it. So it doesn't have to even be exactly four by six. And then I have another trick for you all. So these making these heart postcards is just, um, it's so relaxing and fun. And once you get into it, you're not going to want to stop. So I recommend having like a whole stack, um, <laughs> but to make it, to make it even more fun and relaxing. So you can just play with the paint. Um, we can make a heart template. So go ahead and just grab a piece of scrap paper and then fold it in half. And you probably remember this from school too. So you just cut along the fold and make sure this is on here. And voila, you have a heart. So I'll give oh, everybody now I need a to run chance. off and grab my scissors. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I can give everybody a chance to do that. Um, so I have one here that I made out of um, pink cardstock so it would show up better. Um, so then all you have to do is just put it on your postcard and then grab a pencil and trace it on here. And this is just um, student grade paper that I uh, went ahead and trimmed to the four by six size. I'm gonna do, I think I'll work on two like at the same time, <laughs> just in case the one doesn't turn out good. Small sizes are such a nice way just to like test out materials too. Like if you're messing with some new types of paper or um, experimenting, I find. Yes, yes. And then um, one more tip. So if you watercolor over this um, pencil line, the um, gum Arabic that's in the paint will seal the color in there. Um, so what I like to do is just get an eraser and then I kind of just like lightly erase the lines. So that way you can still see it. Hopefully you all can still see these. Yeah, I think you can still see it. Yeah. So I'll, I'll erase this one too. This, it's almost like, you know, you kind of like zone out and you can put music on and do this. It's just like so much fun. And while everybody's getting their postcard ready, I thought I'd show you this too. I experimented yesterday. I wanted my, um, the homemade postcards to look more official. So I just had some fun with a pen and I wrote on the back side. And oh, you know, you so can, cute. you can even get like really fancy. Like this one, I tried to like be like make calligraphy, like kind of style, or you could just use like a water brush. 
Um, but, it, you know, it makes it more official looking. So when you send it in the mail, people will be like, oh, wow, look at this cool postcard. Oh, man, I got so excited cutting out my heart, Lisa, that at first it was even too big for my postcard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they're super easy to, uh, to, you know, trim, trim up again. And yeah. then, um, yeah, so I think I'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna, I'll move one of these off of here. Um, so what I like to do to make this really fun is um, do some wet on wet coloring. So I'm getting the quinacridone rose and I'm making it really, really light. So let me add some more water here. Oh, I need to, let me move this over so you can see everything. Yeah, so now everything's on the screen. So um, watercolor postcards, I made these out of student grade paper and the ones that you buy in the store, um, they're generally not the most forgiving paper. So once you put down some paint, it can dry like and leave hard edges. So what I like to do is um, lightly, you know, paint just a light wash over the whole thing. And you can mix up your um, colors here, like whatever pinks or reds you have. And you don't have to worry about them um, turning to mud since it's, um, you know, they're both within the same family being the pink or the red. So here I have just a light, just a light wash on here. And you didn't worry about just adding water to your heart since it's not that big. You just went in with paint. Yeah, and I just, it all together. I just went for it. And now I wanted to show you. So some of these reds really react with water. Um, so this one is permanent alizarin crimson. And watch what it does when you add it to water. Let's see if it does it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Can you see that? that blooming? Yeah. Yeah. So it blooms. And you can like put some more here. Yeah. And then I like to rinse my brush off. And this is um, PR254. Let me see. It's Windsor Red and Windsor and Newton. And then do you say pyrrole or pyrrole? I've heard people say it both ways. I might honestly um, say it both ways myself, Lisa. <laughs> I think I often say pyrrole, but I could be wrong. This is another one. Yeah, it's like you never know. This is another one that really reacts with water. It's not doing it as much today. That's one that negative uh -huh. about living in drier areas. Like things dry really fast. So I think that the part over here that I did the permanent alizarin crimson, I don't know if you can see, but it's already starting to dry. Yeah. So I'll show you my, uh, my next little trick because this is just at the right stage. Some of these reds react with water really well. It almost looks like when you do the salt trick. So this is pretty dry here. So I'm just going to dab some water in and then watch these blooms. It's oh. like... The water's pushing the color out. I love yeah. how you're dabbing at the surface, whether with color or with water, and just seeing what happens. Yeah, and some of these, when they dry, they get even more pronounced. And if you really want to be random, you can splat with just clean water. So look at that. Isn't that so cool? And textures just make it so much more interesting. I feel like it gets a little depth and character instead of just a flat, a flat um, pink heart. Yeah, yeah. And plus it would be super hard to make it, you know, all a solid heart. <laughs> like that would be, that's beyond my capabilities. Oh, just embrace, um, embrace it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's why, you know, you can make like so many of these. And here, I think I can put in a little bit more magenta, dab some of this in. But isn't that the coolest? Oh, that's, it's so swirly. And I love how at one co corner, that top left, you've got some of that kind of darker red helping it kind of pop off the page. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. You could have yeah, played it. Um, yeah, <laughs> and I'm not really liking how this part right here dried. So, you know, you can 
just add some more in there. Yeah. Yeah. When do you decide to stop messing with it? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's always hard to know when to stop. And um, while we're waiting for this one to try, I thought I'd show you a few that I did. So look at this one, how um, it, all the blooms are in here. Isn't that, I mean, that's just so cool. Like you couldn't paint this. If you like, you sat down and you said, okay, I'm going to paint like this little pattern right here. You just couldn't do it. You just have yeah. to let the paint do the magic. Oh, it's so, yeah, so organic. I see some folks commenting about that too. Just that organic nature of those blooms. Yeah, yeah. And then here's one. I didn't really like this one. So I just put splatters all over the whole thing. And, you know, it somehow it makes it look like you meant it to be that way. It looks just like so cool. Can you show us your splatter technique? I feel like that's something that takes a little knack. Oh, I don't know that I have necessarily <laughs> the greatest one. Um, let's Maybe see it's just going for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just have to go for it. One thing I like to do, so I have, what I like to do is I like to get a rag. So this is my well-loved, it's a wash rag from Ikea. And I put it down on my work surface because inadvertently I'll put something in a splat and then ruin it. <laughs> so yeah, this way, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this way the splats will, um, you know, they'll be absorbed by the rag. So let's get some nice juicy um, permanent alizarin crimson here. And I just, I'm the, I'm the one, I'm the kind of girl, I like to just like, let me put this here. I hold my brush over where I want it to splat. And then I just tap it with my finger. And look at that. You get a nice little range of sizes. And now your yeah. whole page has some of the, like, it sort of brings that whole page together too. The heart and kind of little embellishments around the edges. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you can... See how there's more paint collecting over here on the upper right? You mm -hmm. can um, also tilt your postcard. Let's see, tilt it and, you know, back and forth. And then the color will blend even more. Oh, it's just like embracing all the magic of watercolor instead of freaking out about it of, oh no, there's a bloom or a bleed. <laughs> 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 right? But here we're like trying to force a bloom. So, so. That's what, that's what makes it really fun. It's like you said, it's just the magic of watercolor, like just watching the magic happen. And sometimes I just like to watch paint dry. <laughs> oh, I see a fun comment from Sandy saying, what's the fun in keeping um, from, from laying your, keeping your art from the leftover splats, embracing the messy painter. <laughs> <to keep their own. laughs> yeah. Yeah. And someday I want to like wear just like a white shirt and, um, get splats like all over it. And then I'll feel like an official artist. <laughs> but yeah, Sandy, you're totally right. Oh, well, I'm, I'm doing my second little heart now. Oh, are you? Do we, yeah. I was going to say, we can move on to, maybe well, I should, man, I'll like talk about these. Uh, I'll talk about um, the flowers next. Cause I have a little, I have a little tip for that too. Oh. Um, so here are some flower postcards that I did already. And since we're talking hearts, this helps me uh, bring up a point that I wanted to share. And that is when you're doing flowers, flowers are really, really forgiving. Like you can make just a blob and put another little color in the center and people will read it as a flower. Um, and so, uh, but the one thing that will make your flowers look more like flowers is to remember to always point your petals back towards the center. Mm. So, um, and one way you can remember this, I just thought of this, I don't know, when I was doing all these hearts, it's like, so I put a little dot here. You don't have to start this way. And usually I don't, but make hearts for your petals and then have all the points going to the center. 
Now we're putting our heart practice to use with another sun. Yeah, so we can put our heart practice for, for use. So doesn't that totally look like a flower? And then you can color it in. If the shape uh, didn't turn out exactly right, you can, um, while it's still wet, you can make it a little bit bigger. Like this That's one, so I'll make sweet. a little bit bigger. It's fun to just start drawing with the brush too. You're not worrying about doing this in pencil first. No, I, I um, usually when I'm out hiking, I, uh, I'm with other people and I've kind of given up on pencil unless something's really tricky. <laughs> like, like I might just put a little, you know, really light sketch to try to get a mountain the right way or I'll put a few dots um, for the tops of trees just so I don't go out of bounds and make all my trees like the same size or make one go off the page or whatever. But yeah, I've kind of, uh, I've kind of skipped. <laughs> That's great. Just direct and let go of worrying about having it just be perfect and dive in. Yeah. And then here we go. I'm putting some darker color at the points of the hearts. And watching that blend, Ooh. It's just, isn't that cool? Like, it's so cool. I could just totally do that all day. Well, that color shift too, like gives them dimension all of a sudden. They become like something that you could lift off the page. Yeah, yeah. And then I wanted to show another trick. So up until now, I've been using just the round, round brush. Hope, uh -huh. you, can, hope you can all see that. So now I wanted to show you a trick that I just figured out with a dagger with making flowers. Um, so here is the dagger. If you're not familiar with it, it's kind of like a flat brush, but um, then it's like got this cut slant to it. So hopefully, hopefully everyone can see that. Yeah, that's that Rosemary R12 dagger. Love it. Yes, it's like so much fun. So here's something I've been watching um, a lot of Chinese brush painting videos and um, Oh, I think we just froze up a, a light little bit color on a brush and then um, there we go. You, are you still there? I am. I okay. think we just had a little, little frozen moment, yeah, but yeah, we're okay. back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, so what part did we leave off? So I'll, I'll rinse the brush and start over. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a trick. Um, I, I've, I've been kind of binge watching Chinese brush painting videos with, with Chinese New Year and everything. Um, and I noticed one thing that they do is they load multiple colors on the brush. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll try that with this dagger and see how it does with petals. So I'm going to load the dagger brush up with just a little light magenta. And then I'm going to take the tip and just the tip, I'm going to touch it into the pan here with the magenta. So the darkest color will just be on the tip. So now the brush is all loaded and I'm going to put the brush here. I'll make a dot again for the center. And just so you know, usually when I'm painting flowers, I, I kind of save the center for last. I'm just doing this for the demo to show you. Um, but let's, hopefully this will work. So I put the dagger down and then kind of swoop it. Oh, look at like that. Like that. And then see where the, it was, I, since I loaded it with the light color first and then just put the dark color on the tip, it makes like, it's almost like it shaded the petal already. Yeah, it's, it's like the coolest the thing. Oh, yeah. So I, my uh, my dagger's tucked away. I'm trying this with a round too. Doesn't look quite as successful for me. I'll have to play. Wow, look at that variation you got. Yeah, right. And if sometimes, depending on the paper that you use, it will even show. Like I like to just kind of um, wiggle it around, and sometimes it will. Show, oh, I need to reload with paint. So I rinse off the brush. And I'm going to load it with just the light color here. And then once again, I'm just going to put the tip, like the very tip of the dagger in the pan just to get some really strong paint there. 
And then I put the brush down and I kind of wiggle it. And I see a question in the comments about tips for making red poppies. And uh... Oh, red poppies. Mm. The, um, I would say the, the tip with red poppies, the trick is to um, use multiple colors of red. Like don't just use one red, use like multiple or else add more orange or more yellow to the color that you have. So Lisa, I'm I'm experiencing a little troubleshooting. Like I loaded my brush up with too dark of a color on the whole thing. So I went in with a little paper towel to dab it. Do you have any other tips on things, what to do when things go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I would say just go with it. Like you need to do that. <laughs> embrace it, embrace it. Okay. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, and you can you can always um, you know, put darker color in the center or even put a blue and turn it into a purple, like a purpley color um, if it's too dark. And a good old reminder of practice, not perfection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just go with it. Oh, so here, it. here's it's one so of these positive. that I was just kind of playing around with, but you can see, look at how dark it got on the edge and then really light. Um, towards the base of the petal. And then I kind of dropped in some yellow for the center. It's just like so much fun. I love with that center yellow too, the, how it's just blended together. It's so soft. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, I love that. Okay, so I guess we can do like a whole flower postcard. So this time I cut, um, I had some, arch and here's another tricky one do you say arch or do you say arches for the, for <laughs> I the grew up saying arches however <laughs> learning French makes me want to call it arch but I, I think I'm probably stuck saying arches um fun little side note I don't know if you have this tire company and where you're from but there's a tire company called Les Schwab and I grew up thinking <laughs> it was French for like Les Schwab and thought Schwab was another word for tires. And my husband likes to make fun of me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that before. <laughs> everything, everything always sounds better in French anyhow. <laughs> it just makes it sound so much better. So um, here I'm getting my folio palette and um, I have some other reds on here. So I've got, um, so this is Organic Vermilion um, from Daniel Smith. And then this is Quinn Rose again. And then this one is Venetian Red. And then um, as you all probably know, um, the mixing complement of red is green. And I've come across um, in my desert explorations, I've come across this really pretty um, sage kind of green color that I like to use for leaves. And that is taking this um, Venetian red and then mixing it with cerulean. And it makes this really pretty, let me put some more cerulean in here. It makes this really pretty desert sage green. Oh, I love so, cerulean yeah. mixed. That, yeah, that's so subtle. It's right. It's just so soft. And um, this is like the perfect color for agaves and yuccas. Can you give us a swatch of just the um, Venetian red? We can see what might be similar in case people have something else on the Oh, palette. yeah. So Venetian red, it's um, here's Venetian red. So um, Indian red would be similar. Uh -huh. um, it's kind of like an earthy red that's more opaque. Because mm. it's the the cerulean is kind of a, an opaque color. Here's some yeah. cerulean. So it's it's more of an opaque color. Um, oh, sorry, that's not cerulean. This one's the cerulean, which also makes a good color. You're playing with cobalt teal blue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's cobalt teal blue. How did you favorite. know? <laughs> okay, so that's the cobalt teal blue. But cerulean also makes a good color mixed with um organic vermilion oh i mean this is what i could do all day lisa is play with i these. know right 
So that gives you a really soft purple. But let me think. So Venetian red. So it's like um, Indian red in um, like a, a it's it's like an opaque kind of earthy red. And let me put this back here. So this is the Venetian. And it fades out to like this really kind of pretty peachy, pinky color. I don't know how you say that. Yeah. <laughs> you that one. yeah. So I like to use that for these kind of gray, these gray leaves here. Mm. I think that one's like really pretty. It's um, nice and subtle too. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me clean this off because I made a giant mess. <laughs> well, I'll go, so I'll I'll just... go testing all my various reds here in my palettes, red browns. <laughs> Deep scarlet is one of my staples, but I'll see. I'll see what else I've got here. I, I, I think I have some deep scarlet. I think I learned about that from you. I don't have it in this palette though. Let me clean that off. So, should we paint some flowers now? Yes. And then um, my other, my other green that I've really been loving lately. So I've been really been loving that kind of sage green, and then I've been liking. Um, phthalo blue, green shade, mixed with uh, quinacridone gold. And it makes this really pretty kind of spring color. Oh, yeah. It's like springy color. And mm -hmm. if it's too wild, you can always take some red and tone it down. Can you see how that mm -hmm. really toned it down just by yeah, adding a little bit of red? bringing the compliment to tone it down. Someone was just asking what you sprayed your palette with, just water to kind of- Yeah, so that was just water. <laughs> yeah. So on my desk here, I have this um, big water mist bottle. Um, so I don't have to keep refilling it. And then in my kit that I take hiking and stuff, I have a little tiny one that Maria gave me. It's like so cute. And you yeah. fill your palettes in such a cool way too, with the paint at the uh, top and a little bit yeah. of space at the bottom. Yeah, thank you for for mentioning that. I wanted to point it out and I forgot. So, um, in the desert, things dry so fast that um, I have to get all my colors kind of ready to go ahead of time. And I like to have um, this extra space where I just put, uh, like, I just put some water and like have some color like ready to go. Then when I go to paint, I can just pick it right up from here. So oh, I so kind cool. of like, yeah, I kind of plan out like, okay, what else colors am I going to use? I'm going to use some magenta, some cerulean, and then I kind of get them activated and ready. And then I can just like, because things dry super fast <laughs> in the desert. It's like, you're always fighting. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're fighting the wind and the heat. It's like crazy. Bit of a race. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So let's see. So I want to make one of those um, dagger flowers. And I found with these postcards, um, you kind of have to, I like to start in one corner and then work my way across to the other corner. So you can either start in the lower left or like, and then work your way to the top right. But just go like kind of on a diagonal because um, some of them, if you kind of start in the middle, it just it doesn't look exactly right. Like, and Lisa, when you started dreaming these up, what, what was your inspiration? Did you have some flowers at home or look online for some inspiration or are you just using your imagination here? Uh, these are all kind of imaginary flowers because <laughs> it's too much stress <laughs> to try to paint, paint, paint one. Um, but yeah, and, it, and mostly I've been kind of thinking of more, like this one, I was thinking of a wild rose. Like, so this mm -hmm. one, we have some like this here in Texas and we have some in our garden. Um, and the neighbors actually have some roses still blooming. So <laughs> it's, it's crazy, like the different parts of the world because my dad lives in Ohio and he's like buried under snow, so. Oh man. Well, this is very freeing, Lisa. I'm I'm just gonna follow your lead here. <laughs> All right. So I think I want to try to um, practice another one of those um, uh, flowers you make with the dagger brush. So I'm making 
I'm adding like tons and tons of water here. So I'm really loading up the brush and um, then I'm tipping just the very tip. And I think I'll start this one like up over here. And I'm just kind of like wiggling here. Mm -hmm. Just to make that little fringe. And I like to rotate the paper when I'm doing this. So I'm gonna rotate it over this way. And I might, um, things are drying faster because it's, um, it's getting warm up here. <laughs> My office, um, it really hits the afternoon sun. So I'm reloading between each petal here. So there's another one. So I rinse the brush again, reload here, reload the tip, and then wiggle this one around. There's that. And then I think I better reload one more time. Wiggle this in. I love those little jagged edges you've got with those little saturated. Right, it's kind of like, before. yeah, it's kind of like fringed. So now I'm going to get um, some of that Quinn Quinacridone gold here. And I'm going to put like just a little bit of that in the center. And hopefully it didn't dry too fast and it can kind of run. Mm. There's that. And now... I'm drying off, and I'm gonna put my rag here so you can see. So I'm drying off the brush and I'm picking up some really strong of that organic vermilion. And while everything's still wet, I'm just gonna tap it kind of in the middle. So we don't have ver vermilion, any other kind of bright orange. Yeah, like, so um, let me think like chiral scarlet or um, yeah, any of the warm reds. Oh, I forgot to mention that too at the beginning. So there's um, warm reds and cool reds. And the warm reds lead more towards orange. And um, the cool reds lean more towards blue, which you can see more in this. So these, these are all cool reds and they lean more towards the blue side. And then these have a little bit more orange in them. So they're warmer reds. And then I wanted to mention too, this color here, I get so many questions about it. It's called shell pink that's in my palette. And this, I use this for in the desert and it actually has some white in it. Um, it has titanium white in it. So it makes things more opaque. So that, you can that go, line, isn't it? The yes, color? yes, that's the whole bind. That's the only whole bind um, paint, watercolor I think I have, but I just love this color because you can go over top of things with it since it's so opaque. So now we have this flower. Um, so my flower's got an order of magnitude more petals than yours, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> the problem, totally I see some cool. others are in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally cool. <laughs> so my northwestern climate is much slower to dry too. I optimistically dropped in the yellow and <laughs> a little bloomy. I'm rolling. I love it. Okay. Yeah, just roll with it. So let's see. So let's see. How about um, we do like a rosy kind of peony kind of flower next? So like one like this. Love it. So one one tip with these is you want to put your darkest color in the center of the flower, and then as you work your way out. Add some water to your brush so it gets lighter. So let's like add one of those here. And I'm trying to use the shape of the dagger to make these petals. So let me put the rag back here. So I kind of rinsed off the brush just a little bit. Hopefully I didn't rinse too much off. Yeah, there we go. And let's do this. It's kind of starting small and dark. And you look like you're using a little more of that nice kind of vermilion, orangey red. 
Yeah, I thought since this one I used the magenta, I would put an orangey red next to it just for contrast. I like how you're kind of dancing the brush around and leaving that white space too. Yeah, white space is your friend. You don't want to lose your friend. <laughs> I noticed in the middle too, you've kind of got the three little dots, which feels like it's got a little balance. It's not two, it's not four, just like the little center dots. Yeah. And All then right. I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe I want this to be even darker. So I'll grab my other palette here and get some of that darker red and kind of drop it in and like, ooh, that's like blending really good too. Kind of add a little bit more depth to it. Mm. Yeah, hopefully that's showing up on the camera. Yeah. Oh, now we've had some practice from our hearts. Yeah. Let's see, maybe one more flower like over here and then I can go ahead and add some leaves. Let's see, what kind of flower should I make? And what color should I use? Maybe like a dark magenta. Bring this one back over. I think I'll switch over to the round brush for this too. So going back to the round brush here. Let's see. Make a really dark one. You've just turned your paper. Yeah, I always, I always end up turning my paper. <laughs> it never fails. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm trying to make this one like it's kind of drooping down. And once again, trying to make all of the petals go back to one point for the center. That's a great tip. And sometimes I like to rinse my brush off and then kind of, so I rinsed it and then I'll tap it just on the edge here and then kind of pull some color across. So you get all that variation. And then while this is still wet, I'm going to grab some green and kind of make a little base for it. And then I'll grab some more of this. Make a little more blue. The green starts to make a bouquet. Yeah, then it start, suddenly starts to feel more like, hey, there's a bouquet happening here. Ties them together. So now that's like that. Then maybe I'll mix up some of that sage green with cobalt teal. <laughs> so the cobalt teal light and the Venetian or the Indian. Oh, and that's another thing too that I love about um, only filling the pan halfway. I don't always rinse my brush going when I'm mixing up a color. So I just kind of use this area here to grab some paint. Yeah, it seems like it might help keep some of your colors a little cleaner. Yeah, yeah. And kind of pull so down the paint instead of kind of digging the middle out. Yeah. Yeah, my so next... I have some green here. Yeah, so maybe I'll put some of this gray here. And I like to make a little stem and then kind of make these little lines for 
the um, leaves to come off of. And then I just use the shape of the brush to kind of make, make the leaves. So hopefully you can see that. And you can rinse your brush off to make it a little bit lighter. Ooh, that one's pretty. Put another one. And then maybe I need like another leaf coming off the side over here. Make those little stemmy things. I should know the name of that. <laughs> Technical <term. laughs> Yeah, random, random fact about me. I was the um, two-time president of the Austin chapter of the Native Plant Society of Texas. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like a total botany nerd. I think it's called a petiole. I think that's the word. I feel like I learned it in biology, but I've forgotten all <laughs> the technology. Yeah, so this is getting there. All right, okay, let's see what else this needs. I think it kind of needs something swooping over this way. So we'll make kind of more of a greenish blue. I'm just like putting this all in the same clump of green <laughs> that I already had. Well, then they're kind and of all way, related, huh? Yeah, that way it kind of keeps everything feeling, you know, like it's all part of the same, same uh, painting. You're not just using all these like random colors. Maybe a little bit more blue. Yeah, that's looking kind of cool. And maybe we need like a big leaf over this way. So I think I'm going to switch back to the dagger again. And I'm going to get some more yellow in here. That Quinn Gold, maybe make like a sound big, and you can kind of overlap these too. We've got a question on how do you decide what it needs? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even know myself. I think it's like, you know, just balance. I think you want, um, if you have too much red in one area and you want some more green. Yeah, that extra and green kind of balances over all the, the three big flowers, it seems, what you're just yeah. there. All right, let's see. I kind of feel like this is still wet enough. I can add a little bit more. Woo! That's really bright. <laughs> a, little more, a little more blue in there than what I wanted, but it, it, should, it still looks cool. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Now I think we need some, since this we have yellow here in the center of this, of this flower, but we don't really have any yellow anywhere else. I'm thinking we need to add like a little, little one of these little sprigs. Oh, I like those sprigs. Yeah, they're super fun too. So let's see, where should I put this little guy? Maybe peeking over here so you can kind of go there. And once again, I make those little places for the the pedally thing to go 
And I'll grab some more of the Quinn Gold. And just kind of put this on, just kind of dab it on there. Maybe get some more water so we get some light ones. I love it when the yellow touches the green too. That's so pretty. I like that little saturated yellow too and those different style of marks you're adding, the little kind of stamp. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm not liking this space here. So I think I need to add something in there. Maybe some more <laughs> of these guys or something else. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to turn this again. While I have this color on my brush, I feel like I need some of this lighter green up here, too. Okay, that's cool. Let's see how that looks now. That's kind of cool. Yeah, what should I put in this space here? Let me think, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> Looking pretty close there, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's see, let's see. Might well, just need your little have... signature in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just put like a little heart since it's Valentine's Day. Oh, there you go. Tie it together with one last little bit of red. Yeah, maybe put like, uh, oh, got too much paint on there. <laughs> Rinse that off. Put like a little heart here. Aw, that's sweet. <laughs> and sometimes you like to put like, little surprises in things too. So maybe I'll kind of make like a little petal off to the side and then see if anybody notices when they get the <laughs> postcard. Oh, did you know there's like a little heart in there? I happen to have a couple little smudges on my postcard. <laughs> I, might cover up, I might paint a couple little hearts right over them. Yeah. A little bit of orange there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I still need something here. Like needs a little something, something. Maybe just some more yellow. Woo. Maybe we'll just make some little more little dots like they're more of those little sprigs yeah maybe make some more they're like a good space filler and sometimes so I grabbed my other brush so <laughs> I'm like using two brushes at once kind of load some of that green oh that's filled up so beautifully Lisa <laughs> Thanks, Maria. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, I think that's about done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold it up a little bit so we can see it a little closer. Oh, oh, it's wonderful. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> and you know, I um, everyone who's been joining us, we would love so much if you wanted to post your work, whether. Um, if you want to post on Instagram and tag us with um, at Art Toolkit and at Side Oats, I'll just put that in the chat, which is uh, Lisa's handle, or post it on Facebook. Um, those are, are beautiful. Lisa, thank you for guiding us through here. I'll just pull up our faces again and we can say hello. Um, I'll give you okay. a little, oh, let me bring you up too. I'll give you a little peek at my, my little effort here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see. <laughs> oh, I love it. You can probably bring a few more things down there. And um, here's one of my hearts. Oh, um, I love the so, heart too. 
Thanks for your support and um, playing with these. And um, Lisa, do you want to come tell us anything coming up you want to share? Or otherwise, we'll just plan on. I know we've got some things in the works, don't we? But <laughs> yeah, we have some things in the works. Should we should we mention the workshop? We are planning a workshop, everybody, um, with Lisa. So stay tuned to our newsletter. Lisa, I can't wait to take your workshop and have you here with us. Um, do you want to give a little sneak peek about it? <laughs> uh, well, I didn't. I don't have my whole desk is crowded, but it's going to be of um, exploring the desert with watercolors. So I'm going to have all kinds of tips about watercolors in the desert and like um, a palette to build and, um, you know, practical tips for painting because how everything dries super fast, like so fast. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. And um, everyone, thank you again for joining us and uh, stay tuned to our newsletter. Um, if you don't already subscribe, that's a great place to hear about um, what's coming up and new projects and products and, um, and our, our live demo series. So Lisa, thank you again. And um, we'll, we'll be in touch soon. Thanks so much, Maria. It was so much fun. And I would love to see everybody's samples too. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look for y'all on, on social media or even just feel free to email hello at arttoolkit.com if, um, if that's more along your, your wavelength. So take care, everybody. Have a great rest of your day and thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, everyone.